dopamine is a massive thing and it determines a lot of your actions in life. Today, we're gonna talk about how to naturally and unnaturally upregulate your dopamine receptors so that you can go from chump to champ. Dopamine, like many things in life, is determined by our environment, our behaviors, and our genes, except genes is the most important thing in that you can have completely unhealthy lifestyle behaviors, except still have high levels of dopamine just because you genetic phenotypes for high dopamine levels in that you have lower levels of degradation enzymes or you, you have higher levels of receptor types or decreased dopamine transporters, a lot of different things. So it can be beneficial to learn how to modify the dopamine system so that you can kind of tilt it to where you need it to go. Alcar, ASA L-carnitine, this amino acid upregulates the dopamine D1 receptor, the excitatory receptor, as well as increasing NGF. It is fairly safe, widely used, kind of benign in my opinion. I never really noticed much with Alcar, except it definitely has the studies and the evidence to back up its positive effects for the dopamine system. It has some impressive benefits as an antioxidant, as increasing cerebral blood flow, increasing cholinergic activity, and increasing mitochondria function. And all of those effects have positive effects for the dopamine system as a whole, except its most positive effect is that it upregulates a dopamine D1 receptor. Because it increases NGF nerve growth factor, that is important because oftentimes neurotrophic factors can help protect dopamine neuro from oxidation from radioactive oxygen species ROS so neurotrophic factors are very much a helping hand to dopamine it's still a good thing to take overall as a health tonic it's great overall as a mental health tonic even better cordyceps it won't turn you into a clicker it's an androgenic mushroom increase the conversion enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase increasing how much L-tyrosine is converted to L-dopa as well as upregulating the dopamine D2 receptor then inhibitory receptor type. It has a lot of positive effects for your health, like improving immune system function, increasing VO2 max, being a powerful antioxidant. Cordyceps like Alcar kind of has more mild effects for the dopamine system for upregulation, except it's still good to supplement and I take it every day just for its mountain of benefits. Uridine, you know I would talk about it eventually. A very underrated uridine always comes up because there's so many positive effects of the dopaminergic system. Like cordyceps, it upregulates the dopamine D2 receptor as well as it also increases dopamine release in the striatum, which is very important for our motivation and our goal-directed behavior as well as it also increases acetylcholine usage so it's dopaminergic and cholinergic and oftentimes those two neurotransmitters are very linked in that if you affect one, you also affect the other. The most crucial reason why it is so good for upregulating dopamine receptors and just improving the system as a whole is that it's an integral part of the Mr. Happy stack. It's basically a stack that was formulated to fight symptoms of neurodegenerative diseases because it just has a lot of positive benefits for brain health because it improves membrane synthesis, improves synaptic function, and improves dopamine sensitivity. And this can have a lot of very positive effects for the brain. For some compounds, it's like taking it from the cookie jar that every time you take a cookie, you have to wait for the cookie jar to get refilled so you notice those effects again because tolerance builds with uridine, with the Mr. Happy Stack, this isn't the case, because every time you take from the cookie jar, there just gets more cookies in the cookie jar, in that the effects get stronger the more you use it, and it's a very good thing to take. And in my experience, it's one of those things that when I don't take, I notice my life just starts to fall apart in so many different ways. And when I do come back to it, I notice I'm just a lot better in everything. You know, I have more intrinsic motivation to go to the gym, or to study, or to learn about something that I should, and do positive things for me, like eat clean, Honestly, efficaciously, it's a, it's an 11 out of 10 compound. It's so good. NAC, an acronym for an impressive endogenous amino acid that has a lot of positive effects for the brain, for the body, and more importantly, for dopamine in that it's one of the only known compounds that can help dopamine neurons regain their function after abuse after they've lost their function, which is so rare. Some people do notice some anhedonia from NAC because it can lower some glutamate activity, except that very much depends on the person and not everyone does notice that effect from it. It also protects dopamine neurons from oxidative damage, even from some strong pro-oxidant compounds like methamphetamine, which is insane. So it's a very good thing to take regularly and consistently so it can protect your body 
protect your neurons. Next, we have the unnatural. And firstly, is cerebral lysin. It's very much the idea of gladular therapy in that you consume an animal gland to heal your own gland. And that'll have a lot of bioavailable nutrients, peptides, minerals, vitamins for that gland to improve its health and vitality. And that is the idea of cerebral lysin in that it's purified pig brain. So it's free from the risk of prawns disease because it is pig. And it's essentially like a vitamin shot for your brain. And it contains some very powerful neurotrophic factors like BDNF, GNDF, NGF and CNTF. All of these assist in the repair and the modulation of the dopamine system in that promoting growth of dopamine neurons and protecting those dopamine neurons. So if you think about it, dopamine is a CEO and these neurotrophic factors are the assistant kind of helping everything run a bit more smooth. And I wanna highlight the fact that it increases CNTF, ciliary neurotrophic factor, and this is very interesting because it's been shown to induce D2 dopamine receptor neurogenesis in the adult forebrain, so in the frontal cortex, aka it can increase dopamine receptor density in the frontal cortex, which is very important for your executive function. That is why it's so interesting. And even evidence to the point is that pathways being investigated for Alzheimer's disease at the moment. Cerebral lysin is a very safe compound and it is very effective too. It almost has a hundred studies audit from different institutions about its efficacy and the reason you haven't heard about it at least in the western world is that it comes from russia and they just don't like it because it comes from russia and that is like the true and blue of it unfortunately it is getting more traction nowadays and i think it is getting approved for some use except it's very much not in the mainstream not even in the side stream not even in the side side stream except slowly it's gaining reputation because it is effective and hopefully over time, people will realize how effective of a compound it is. When you take it, you notice temporary brain fog, except that subsides after some time and you notice semi-permanent mental clarity. It is very much feel worse now and then feel better later. My experience with it was kind of horrendous. Like it was terribly debilitating brain fog in that I would go to the grocery store and I would walk around and I wouldn't even be able to comprehend like shelf labels. And it just seemed bizarre to me. And then I would have an existential crisis in the grocery store because I'm like, I can't understand this. I just can't comprehend it. So my brain fog was so bad. I don't have to leave the store and just go home and just accept the L, take the L, and then just kind of wait for it to wear off. And eventually after a few days, it did wear off. I just didn't notice that many positive effects from it. But this brain fog is actually what you want. This side effect is actually a primary effect because an abundance of neurotrophic factors causes brain fog. Except that's just my experience. It's not in the experience. If you go on Reddit, if you just look on the internet, you'll see countless and countless anecdotes of people claiming cerebral lysine changed their life in that it lowered their addictions, it made them smarter, it eliminated anxiety. So it's very much a case by case basis. P21 is of particular interest because it's a nasal spray primarily containing CNTF, that ciliary neurotrophic factor that's more specialized to dopamine neurons. So that's interesting. It's a lot more appealing for the average consumer because instead of shooting it up your arm, you can shoot it up your nose and just take it in a nasal spray. 9-methyl-beta-carboline. If you've been in the space, you've heard about this compound for a while for its benefits for the dopamine system, and you might have been tempted to try it because it does have a lot of positive effects in that short term. It inhibits MAL A and MAL B, so it can increase the levels of dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. And long term, more interestingly, it can increase nirite outgrowth of dopamine neurons. It can enhance the expression of tyrosine hydroxylase. It can limit pro-oxidant dopamine metabolite compounds and increase neurotrophic factors specifically for dopamine neurons. It can do a lot of different things and a lot of its positive effects are localized to the hippocampus, which obviously is the memory epicenter of the brain. So there's a lot of benefits there. Sounds amazing, except the biggest con about it is that it's under research. It's more of a research chemical. There have been some studies, except some, that's the key word. It has been shown to be safe up to 10 days of use. There is that to go by, as well as it causes sun sensitivity, so that when you take it, you have to stay out of the sun and you have to identify as a vampire because otherwise you'll be more easily able to get sunburned. It's potentially carcinogenic, 
except so is the sun. It just depends on the dose. And if you're just running short term cycles, I wouldn't think it's an issue. Phenyl paracetam, paracetam with an extra acetyl group. This is a very much like for like amphetamine alternative that is on the same level for its stimulation effects. It's a dopamine reuptake inhibitor, except it also upregulates the dopamine receptors, which is kind of weird, except so is neuropharmacology. In particular, it upregulates the dopamine D2, D3, and D4 receptors. And it actually has agonistic effects of the alpha-7 nicotinic receptors, which is obviously a very promising target for ADHD, which is why nicotine is so popular with that disorder. It's an effective compound to take with a very good safety record. It's been used by athletes, by astronauts, by aspiring nootropic advocates. It's a very powerful amphetamine alternative in that it's a very much a like for like. Salbutamine, a special thiamine-like compound that has a homeostatic effect on upregulating dopamine in that it temporarily, when you take it, downregulates dopamine in the prefrontal cortex only to upregulate it later on after cessation of use. So it's very much like feel worse now to feel better later. It also has some impressive effects on the glutamate receptors and acetylcholine inhibiting its degradation. At its core, it is a B vitamin, so it could help resolve some thiamine deficiencies. It feels energizing, like you just wanna do something, and like you wanna go for a run or something like that. And you do feel a bit more sharp, even though it does decrease dopamine in the prefrontal cortex shortly.